Good afternoon on this Resurrection Sunday, um, 2023. Um, this is Wendell. I'm sitting here uh, at Gifford Park Neighborhood Garden, uh, property of a personal friend and a fellow neighborhood leader here in the community. God has blessed me and my family living in for the last 20 plus years uh, since relocated to the Heartland, Omaha, Nebraska. And uh, today I just want to kind of uh, put an installment here on um, his YouTube channel. Uh, just a pressing issue that's a burden that I've been carrying. I need to begin to kind of get it off of me and commit it. Not only cast this care back on Christ who cares for us, cares for me specifically, but also just share it with fellow intercessors and others who might be even join in uh, bearing the load uh, of what is a current day uh, dilemma and a, and, a, and a huge necessity uh, in our nation in our states and our cities and in our communities and specifically uh we're talking about the black community uh, and so the burden god's placed in my heart might seem i guess uh, petty or i would say bias on my part because i happen to fit this demographic uh but what what is the deal and what should be done and what could be done uh for the the mature male that happens to be of African-American descent as categorized, uh, quote unquote, uh, but is not mature in their socialization and, and uh, having been disenfranchised historically uh, and what have you. Uh, and even those who have performed in certain arenas on certain platforms, whether it be athletic, business, and or academic, education-wise, or in law or in medicine, I always find ourselves suspect of whenever caught outside of our field of expertise or our field of uh, supreme and, and superior performance. Uh, and those performances only last event by event, uh, but the credibility lagging uh, and being snared by the stereotypes that hinder us uh, in society in general. Uh, and, and a lot can be said about all that. Uh, but as a spiritual man who's one who follows Christ, who's been born again, set free uh, from the from the uh, uh, the perils of this world, the sin nature, uh, who has the, the born again spirit that's born after the Holy Spirit that came down from the Father and poured into my heart, whereby I cry, Abba, Father. Uh, I realize now I have access to the commonwealth of Israel and not by reason of being born a Jew, even though some would contend that's the case for African-Americans, not here to levy that debate or, or, or take a position either way uh, but i want to talk about those who come into faith for abraham as he is the father of many nations and we're in by grace and by faith through christ who is the one seed that was prophesied of uh, uh when abraham was first sought out by the lord and given that promise that he would be the father of many nations even when he was beyond childbearing age and his wife was barren even when she was young to have children but 25 years after the promise god gives him the seed isaac through his bloodline comes jacob and and down through King David, down to the day that Christ entered the earth. And, and the very reason we celebrate this Passover season that was set up back in the Mosaic priesthood, the Levitical, Levitical priesthood, under the law of God in the Old Testament and Torah, that was manifested uh, even through Christ, whose fulfillment of that law that was given that could not be kept by man back in the Old Testament among the Jews and the Israelites. But Jesus fulfilled that law. And so he earned the right being a righteous and impeccably perfect human being although all God, also all man. Uh, so he provided the perfect flawless lamb of God to be sacrificed for the sins of the whole world. So that's what this whole Passover season is all about. But neither here nor there about today's topic. They want to just talk about what could be done and what should be done uh, for the infirmity, uh, metaphysical uh, calamity and stereotype, uh, the burden, the stigma that's placed on the African-American man, the black man in, in America specifically. And I only talk about America because that's my context. Uh, I'm not an internationally traveled individual. Uh, I've been living, I lived in my neck of the woods where I'm from, my home city uh, for the first 30 years of my life. In the 31st year, I relocated my family with my lovely wife, Alyssa, and our four daughters at the time. And now we live in Omaha, Nebraska, have, have lived here since then. And we came here on a church planning commission, uh, contracted through a particular organization that I won't name today, uh, to establish a black church in North Omaha community, which was the predominantly black population of the city of Omaha, which is the largest demographic concentration of density in the state of Nebraska, the only urban demographic in the whole state. Uh, 
reveling over a million people in the, in the greater Metroplex. And that including the smallest cities around, including Lincoln and, and Bellevue, which is the second and third largest cities in the state. Everything else in Nebraska is pretty much rural and sub-rural uh, for the most part. There are other, some other townships that have, that have grown and, and managed to get some population density, but nowhere near uh, being a city or a metropolitan city like the city of Omaha uh, in this particular state. That's unique from other states because most states have multiple metroplexes, but Nebraska only has one, uh, to my knowledge, and, and from what I've, what I've learned since being here 21 years. But when we talk about the African-American dilemma, uh, the male, uh, the immature male that is not grown into full, outright enfranchised manhood, uh, patriarchy, uh, rifle, shared dominion in the earth, whether it be politically, socioeconomically, and even when we do uh, gain success with Michael Jackson and Michael George in the world, we're, we're restrained to just that individual lane of expertise and, and we entertain the masses. We, we compete on behalf of the conscious of the masses, but not allow much other priorities. Some of us have managed to parlay from one successful career to another, from one arena to another. Uh, but that's uh, far less likely in our demographic than other demographics who uh, have, uh, have have a tendency and, and, and it's expected uh, that they would be mastery, have multiple masteries in life, uh, whether they're public or not. And even a lot of mastery that is actually very much uh, private and yet privately held. And so fortunes being made behind the scenes at board tables, uh, confidentially cloaked in entities of corporations and and, and silent partnerships uh, and uh, of even offshore bank accounts, you name it, just, just running things in the earth. Uh, and, and I want to take it back to Genesis chapter one, where God created man. And we all come from one man, whatever culture, at least you are today. Uh, but in that man, he gave dominion uh, that is in one man and one woman back in the Garden of Eden. Uh, but it's been subdivided by the grace of God to men of every different ethnicity in the scriptures. Uh, and that being my personal uh, reference here I want to read today. Today we're going to go to Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12. And, and I've, I've mentioned a lot of things that are carnal realities that cause conflict and, and angst and debate. And back and forth and somewhat of a wrestling match in the human experience that uh, if not we're not careful we'll end up fighting other tribes for certain powers and displacing one another and, and we enter we live by the zero-sum game that we either win or we lose and whoever wins gets the spoils of war and that's pretty much been the human uh, code of conduct uh, for as far back as history tells us that which was recorded because whoever wins those wars get the right history and they tell in those guys. And so now we're so far down uh, into the human legacy uh, that the winners have told the history that they want us to remember and they've erased the history of their defeated foes. And so those of us whose ancestors lost those wars, we find ourselves as ghosts in our own land, sometimes even in our own homes. And so today we want to talk about how do we overcome that by in the fellowship of Christ's sufferings and how do we overcome that uh, by the power of his resurrection. And that's why this day resurrection son is important to share this. Well, Paul says it this way in Ephesians chapter six, verse 10 says, finally, my brother, I'm talking to men, the male gender, the masculine and the elders, those of, of strength, of age of strength, uh, childbearing years. Says, finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might, that you may be to stand against the wiles of the devil. He says in verse 12, for we, not, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, one another, other humans, ourselves. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Uh, we shouldn't be spilling each other's blood, but he says we wrestle against principalities and against powers, against rules of darkness of this world, against spiritual witness in high places. And then he goes on the next six, seven verses to talk about putting on the full armor of God so we'll be able to stand against all the wiles of the devil in the evil day. And so today I just want to expound a little bit on what that hierarchy of evil entities, principalities, powers, rules of darkness in this world, and spiritual witness high places, what that is actually pointing to by cross-referencing and allowing the scriptures to, to interpret the scriptures for us. Because if we, if we stay in the very uh, strong language of Paul and we polarize on that, we can get lost in translation of what he's really talking about. So what is a principality, what is a power, what is a ruler of darkness 
of this world what is a spiritual weakness in high places uh so i just want to i want to go back to the greek which the, the new testament was originally written in and want to anchor from there and then we'll come over into application of where we are today in our english-speaking world and in our cultural dynamics of today and our diversities and our inclusion needs for inclusion and also shared equity today uh, principalities goes back to a Greek word uh, is ARCH, spelled A R C C H E. Whether I'm pronouncing that right or not, I'm open to your comments and corrections on that. Send me an audio. <laughs> um, but it, it means chief in various applications of order, place, first place, time, or rank. Uh, so this idea of principalities. And just put a pin in that, and I'll come back and expound on that in a second. The second word in that list of hierarchy. In, in Ephesians 6 12 is powers, and the Greek word is exousia, E X O U S I A, and it, it, it in the sense of ability, privilege, i.e., uh, capacity, so to speak, the authority, the right to do something. All right, the capacity and the right, the authority to do something, exousia, powers. And then I'm just going to take one word of the phrase rulers of the darkness of this world, the word we're going to look at is rulers cosmocrator and it talks about a world ruler as in a cosmos ruler one who rules in a terrestrial realm of authority here in the earth and then finally that last one in this hierarchy of things that we wrestle against since we don't wrestle against flesh and blood fisticuff face to face hand to hand combat uh i shoot you or you shoot me all these things are the devil's work it's how he destroys each other through one another and brings those who survive into self-condemnation, which is probably the worst of, of the exchange, believe it or not. Uh, if you don't believe me, ask Cain after Abel's blood was spilled on the ground as he was banished and had to be marked with that murderous reality for the rest of his existence. Uh, and, and in that way, that murderous aura, so to speak, is... is part of mankind today uh, that consider themselves wolves who will take out others before they're taken out. And very much a, a part of the American psyche and when it comes down to it. Uh, and not saying it's 100% it's bad, but I'm just saying there's a better way. There's there's either or pacifism or being uh, malicious against potential threats, but there's a third, there's an alternative path, there's a third option that I want to share today and that's how to, how to deal with these principalities, these powers these rules of darkness in, in this world and these spiritual weakness high places. And and for the for the, the, the that last phrase, spiritual weakness high places, we want to take the word out of there for wickedness in porneria, P-O-N-E-R-I-A in the Greek. It means depravity, i.e. malice, plural, plots, sins. And that's plural sin, not sin as in missing the mark or being off off mark, uh, sins as in habitual. Uh, the condition, the state of, the status, uh, the lifestyle of being a sinner. Uh, so spiritual weakness in high places. Uh, and so to refresh you on that verse in, in Ephesians 6, 12, says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Now it's talking to brethren, those who are born again of the spirit, those who are born of God, those of us who know better, uh, as Christ taught that when we're smited on one cheek, we should turn the other cheek. He's, he's talking to that group of people who, who have decided to take up their cross and follow Christ, to deny themselves, and to love Christ even more than they love themselves, their wives, their children, their father, their mother, their siblings, their natural connections in this earth. Their opportunities that they would love Christ and do his bidding before they would do their own bidding in relative fashion. For we, we talk to that brother and he tells us to be strong in the Lord, not strong in our own might, but the, in the power of his might. All right. And his might is not our might. Uh, his power is awesomely more glorious. He's omnipotent. He's omnipresent and he's omniscient in so many different ways. And, and his manifold wisdom will be made known to us uh, and that we would make that known as the churchmen uh, to the principalities and powers of this world. Uh, if you go and look at Ephesians 3.10, where it says that to this intent, that through the church, the manifold wisdom of God be made known to the principalities and powers of this world. But we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. This is Ephesians 6.12 again. Against powers, against the rules of the darkness of this world, against the spiritual weakness in high places. And 
I want you to put a parenthesis around that phrase in Ephesians 6.12, at last two words, high places. And we're going to go to one more Greek word for you here. It comes from a Greek word that's in the Greek in the Strong's Concordance 2032, Eparanoas, E-P-O-U-R-A. N I O S probably mispronouncing that, uh, but it means to be from above the sky. Uh, so there are spiritual wickedness that operate at a higher level, even above our sky. As an old colloquial saying goes, the sky is the limit when we talk about possibilities and and, and, and applying ourselves to be diligent and, 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 and do real well at something. That the sky is the limit. I'm here to tell you that in Christ, the sky is not the limit because he is high and lifted up. He is sitting high above the domain of earth. And uh, so the Bible says in Ephesians 2, 6, that we have been made to be seated, raised up and seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. That phrase heavenly places there in Ephesians 2, 6 is the same Greek word is here in Ephesians 6, 12. High places above the sky. All right. Heavenly places above the sky that God would give us an elevated perspective on what's going on in the earth and that's why we can afford not to wrestle with flesh and blood down here on a terrestrial plane because christ has lifted us by his grace not by our works or our identity not by who we are what we've done have not done but he's raised us up and sit into heavenly places with himself and it's from that posture his function there his full-time vocation occupation there uh, since the ascension and being seated by the right hand of the Father, as he's making in, in, intercession for those of us who are in his beloved, till his enemies be made his footstool. So there's a timeline, there's a goal, there's an objective, there's an agenda that is very much the eternal kingdom of God's agenda that we need to learn about, that we need to be schooled in by the Spirit of God, that we need to be acclimated into, fully equipped in, and strengthened in. And that's what Paul is saying here in Ephesians 6, 12. Of 610, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might, not human might. We're not talking about gun force. We're not talking about arms, the right to bear arms, the Second Amendment. We're talking about the, the arms of heaven, the angelic host who fights our battles for us, who bear us up lest we dash our foot against the stone. So we need to really understand what it means to be elevated and, and lifted up high and raised up by the Spirit of Christ in heaven place with Christ. He used to look down on a situation and from that perspective to be prayer warriors. And in our prayers, we're wrestling against not flesh and blood, other humans. Our contention is not with other humans, whatever power they have or don't have. Our, our wrestling, our contention is against principalities. These are arcs as in archangels and perhaps the fallen third of angels that were dis dishonorably discharged with Lucifer when he was banished from heaven to earth, uh, whose times are short, whose hell in the lake of fire was eternally is being eternally prepared for, was prepared and created for them, not for humankind. But their job as the punisher in the earth is to convince and, and bet betray, I mean, uh, deceive and trick as many of us as possible into taking on their condemnation with them and, and by doing that we have to self-condemn ourselves because the place wasn't created for us but we need to learn to overcome those principalities those evil spirits those powers that they set up based on the precedents the traumas uh, uh, the dilemmas the, the, the things that trigger us uh, from early childhood war experience uh, violent outbursts domestic violence you name it and these, these enemy spirits get in there and they set up these demarcations, these starting points, these precedents, these, these principal realities that end up being uh, pivot points for our own mental health, our own uh, emotional well-being. That we, we could be in life doing something a, a thousand days away from that event and that something could trigger us and we can be back at that event living in the childhood trauma or uh, the very vulnerable trauma that we went through when we were afraid for our very lives. And so those powers, they, they're exercised as abilities and privileges. We've given the enemy a key to our back door. And sometimes he would give them a key, to, a master key to our front door. And he has literally got a foothold in our lives. He's running our lives. And, and then we get to these other two levels here, rulers of darkness in this world and then spiritual wings in high places. And I think when we look at this, uh, humankind sometimes cope, cope they put they partner with the devil sometimes they ignorantly allow themselves to be using the devil not knowing what they're doing but in some cases there are men who are complicitly evil 
who conspire to trap and condemn, trick, and manipulate other men for what it's worth. The spoils of war. That if I kill on the man, I get whatever he leaves behind. That if I trap, trick, bewitch, control, manipulate another man or another people, that I get whatever potential, whatever worth they are. That if, if I get them to sign off on a dotted line uh, to take this secret potion inside of this treat, uh, that if they bite that, that, that secret potion in there uh, eliminates, eliminates their own control themselves. And now through the seduction of whatever that potion is, that drug, that pharmaceutical, uh, that, 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 that extortion, that threat of violence, that terroristic threat, whatever that control mechanism is, that now I take them captive to do my will. That's the devil's game. And when men participate with him on that level, they're very much devilish in that right. And they're malicious. And so I think that's what it's talking about when it's talking about rulers of this dark world. Uh, there's a God of this world, according to Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, that said that if our gospel be hid, it's hid from those who the God of this world has blinded the minds of. There's also a prince of the power of the air. That before we were born again, that same prince of the power of the air operates in the children of disobedience. It used to operate in us. But now that prince of the power of the air has no control of us because the spirit of Christ has displaced it and given us liberty because whom the Son sets free is free indeed. So when we deal with these last two members of this, this hierarchy, rules of dark and spiritual wickedness, yeah, the principalities and powers are the darkness, are the, wick, are, are the actual spiritual wickedness, but the high places... It's where men of authority, people of authority, people of dominant culture have, have planted their tentacles into these evil principalities and powers. And they're exercising it selfishly against others at the expense of others for their own vainglory. These rules of this dark world, when men would take advantage of your ignorance or your weakness and do those things to perpetrate good, to masquerade as angels of light, all the while meaning your damnation, meaning your detriment, your disadvantage, exploiting your weaknesses and exercising their strengths as the Gentiles do, those, those people, those peoples, those ethnicities that do not have a covenant relationship with God, that they would exercise authority over you. There's one place in the scriptures where it says we shouldn't be like the Gentiles exercising authority over others, uh, but we should be, I would say this, and as a juxtaposition, that we should be servant leaders, that we should serve our strength unto the benefit of other people's weaknesses, and in that way calibrate strengths in a divine community of holiness. Uh, that God has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. We shouldn't practice darkness at the expense of others. We should not practice witchcraft or sorcery uh, to the detriment of others. We should not manipulate others because we're strong when they're weak. We should abide and coexist with them and lend our strength to their benefit. So I'm not going to expound that any further, but it is the burden that is on my heart uh, when it comes to the African-American male, the black man in America, that in many ways, whatever ethnicity or nationality or tribe he happens to be from, because of the color of skin, this, this, this trick of the enemy, this mythology, that I call the myth of supremacy based on the lighter complexion of human manifestation. Uh, that this myth of, of, of supremacy has been perpetrated uh, by the liar, the, uh, by liars and by the father of all lies, who is a devil himself. And it's time that we take a righteous stand against it and begin to wage a battle, uh, a spiritual battle of victory and occupy to our Lord and Savior returns. In the meanwhile, that we would take our rightful place regardless of the color of our skin. As Dr. King said, that we would be judged by the content of our character, not the color of our skin. And and I know I know that seems to be a stretch, but I ask you to pray about it, uh, to get seek the Lord for yourself, those of you who know him, those of you who don't. This is the best day to meet him in terms of the liturgical calendar. Uh, this is the day that is reported over 2,000 years ago that the man Christ Jesus, who had been crucified, that he, had, he was dead on that cross, and they took him down, mortified, and they buried him in a tomb. They placed him in a rich man's tomb that had been donated for the cause. And they went back on this morning before dawn uh, to dress and to spice his body uh, because the Sabbath caught them. They couldn't do it. Uh, darkness caught them into the Sabbath in, in their culture and, and, and Jewish tradition, 
in Israelite tradition, Judaism, they couldn't do it on the Sabbath. That was a day of rest. So the first opportunity they got on right before dawn on Sunday morning, they went back there and they found an empty tomb. And that the man Christ Jesus, the Son of God, the Lamb of God, was raised from the dead. He who was brutalized, who was shredded on that cross, uh, took 49 stripes of a cat of nine tail, and he died. He was brutalized by his stripes that you're healed. The gospel is that he died for our sins, that he was buried, and the third day he rose from the dead. And this day in 2023 commemorates that day over 2,000 years ago. If you didn't know before, but now you know that Christ died for your sins. So I say to you, do you know Jesus? Do you know the Son? Do you know Yeshua, King of kings and Lord of lords? Have you received him? If you receive him today, he'll give you the power to become a son of God, just like he is. Hallelujah. If you learn to walk in his spirit, you will actually be counted as a son of God by him. I care about what other people think. But if you follow his spirit, walk in his spirit, live by his intuition in the earth, let him be your guiding principle, your source, your comfort, your leader, your guide, the interpreter of all truth, that you need not that a man would teach you, but the self same one is given to you from the very beginning that he would teach you all things. Hallelujah. That you need to be born again, as Jesus told to Nicodemus the Pharisee. You must be born again to see the kingdom of God. You must be born again of this water, which is your mother's womb, and the spirit, which is the Holy Spirit, that God would pour out of himself, his own spirit, into you as an earthen vessel, his heavenly treasure, that you might cry out, Abba, Father, that he might give you the words to speak. And give you the power from on high to be his witness in the earth today. And give you the comfort of his eternity, of his of his wealth and his plenty. He owns a cattle on a thousand hills and he would prosper you and give you health. And that he would, he would save you and secure you. The Greek word is sozo, completely in every facet of your existence, spirit, soul, and body. That you can find a refuge in him. And that he will bless you as you lean to him, as you trust and place your confidence in him and none other. I present to you the Savior, Jesus Christ and Him crucified, Yeshua HaMashiach. And I ask that you, you receive Him today, that if you do, you can just simply go to Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10, that if you confess with your mouth that Yeshua is Lord, meaning He's a ruler and master of everything, including your life, He sits on the throne of your heart. And if you believe in your heart, believe and think the same, He'll bless you exceedingly abundantly above all you have to think. If you believe in your heart that God raised from the dead. That's what this Resurrection Sunday is all about. But if you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, that you in fact will be saved, that whoever calls on the name of the Lord should be saved. And so I commit these things to you of a certainty. I'm a living witness of it. Over 42 years ago at age 10, I received him for the first time and it changed my life radically from who I was, the projector I was on, probably to be dead before my teenage years was over in some malicious event or somewhere locked away because I couldn't control my temper. And had been cultivated, born in sin and shaped in iniquity and raised in an environment that was prone to violence. I'd probably been a father of children by many women by now, as some from my background are today, or in prison or dead, like I said. But God saved me. He saw fit to have mercy on me and he put me on a new path and he shaped me in a new light, the light of his son, Christ Jesus. And I became conformed in the image of his son. And he's visited me and spoke with me and walked with me and talked with me and inhabited me and, and made his home in my heart and given me everything that I have in life. And so everything I have and everything I boast, if I boast, I boast in the Lord because it is by the grace of God. I'm saved by grace, not of works. I have nothing to boast about. My wife was given to me by the Lord. My children were given to me by the Lord. Every dollar I've ever enjoyed or pleasured myself with has been given to me by the Lord. Every every sunrise and every noonday has been given to me by the Lord. And every sweet night of rest has been granted to me by the Lord. Every breath that I breathe is his and he gives it to me. So I might say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So if you have never received Christ, today is the best day. It is a day of salvation. And I invite you to receive that based on the words I've said. But not only that, that you would turn to heaven for yourself and ask the one who created you, would he be your redeemer even today? And may that new relationship start. And if you do that, I want to ask you to get involved and find out, seek out a, a Bible teaching church 
with people that have the fruit of the spirit in their lives, that you would commit there and stay there until you know better. Stay in that schoolmaster and follow the Lord among those people as they will set up guards and protections around your life to get the enemy off of you no matter where you're coming from. No addiction, no depravity, no poverty. There's nothing to separate you from the love of God. Please trust that in the name of Jesus. Amen.